Hello, everybody. Really happy to be back with you here today to practice. I hope you're well, staying healthy, taking care of yourself. So today's practice, we're going to be offering twists and inversions, which can be a really great way for the body to release tension and energy. It's one of my favorite practices. So if you have a, a strap or a belt, uh, one or two yoga blocks uh, or books, that might support you in your practice. And if you're on a cushion, just find yourself at the front edge of the cushion, just relaxing the hips and let the knees just fall forward. <sighs> Settling into our practice this, this morning or any time that you're practicing this asana. So we'll begin by turning our attention inward. Perhaps closing the eyes or taking a soft gaze to the earth. And feel the base of your spine, the legs, the feet, parts of the feet connect to the earth, grounded, supported. And then invite the crown of the head to lift right up toward the sky, just lengthening through the spine drawing in the bandhas, engaging belly button to spine, pelvic floor muscles up and in. Relaxing the face and jaw, throat, eyes. And then begin to Invite the shoulders to relax, just melt down away from the ears, drawing the shoulder blades to back body, opening up the heart and the breath, and relaxing into the extremities, the arms and legs, hands and feet. And just notice how you feel today. Not only in your physical body, but mentally, emotionally, energetically. Notice what stands out for you today. What do you need to take care of in your yoga practice? Make those little micro movements, little adjustments to settle in and center. And then begin to turn your attention to the breath. On the inhale, noticing the parts of the body that expand and open and lengthen, inviting in the beautiful breath. And then on the exhale, just inviting the release. The breath can be through the nose exclusively or a combination of nose and mouth breath. Perhaps your inhales and exhales are of the same length. Or maybe you feel that you'd like to have your exhales a little bit longer than the inhale. So we're going to begin our breath asana practice by inviting movement in with seated cat cow. So having the hands connect somewhere to the legs, just lightly. On the inhale, lengthening the spine a little bit more, perhaps placing the hands on the legs as you draw the hands with a little more energy into the legs, inviting that spine to lift and lengthen, maybe looking up 
And then on the exhale, tuck the chin, maybe round the shoulders in a little bit, draw the belly button in toward the spine. And then your next inhalation, lengthen again, drawing upward, energizing. So moving back and forth three or four more times at your own breath pace and your own beautiful timing for what is right for you. The seated cat cow, just energizing the spine. Noticing where the parts of the body that feel tense and tight. The other parts that may feel more open. Perhaps one or two more rounds of breath here. And then we'll meet back in easy pose. Again, take your time in Sukhasana. Take your time always completing all aspects of the asana that you're doing. And again, inviting the rooting to rise, connecting the spine to the earth and lengthening through crown. And then inviting any movement in the shoulders that feel good to you. Maybe rolling the shoulders back or rolling them forward or combination like a figure eight. Arms can stay close to the body or you can move the arms out a bit for more intensity. Maybe move the head and neck around, just checking in with the body. Again, all aspects, noticing how you feel today. Using what you learn about how your body is feeling to inform your practice. Always make those perfect choices. And then coming back to Sukhasana, just inviting now a gentle rocking forward and back. Keeping the spine nice and lengthened here. So keep that crown of the head lifted. Just moving from the waist, just like you're tilting back and then coming forward. Feeling into the back body, the sides of the body, the front of the body. Again, the, the bandhas, gently engaging belly button to spine and pelvic floor muscles up and in. Keep ourselves nice and strong, energized. And then coming to stillness, perhaps uncross and recross the legs if that feels good to you. And then we're going to just begin to rock side to side. And I'll be offering a variety of options here. So again, make your choice. Maybe you'd like to keep your hands on your legs and just simply weight shift side to side. Maybe you'd like to place a hand down, maybe raise the opposite arm up, making this a little bit more of an intense side bend. Maybe if your shoulder's a little bit sensitive, you can bend the elbow and place the hand on the shoulder. Again, just any movement that really invites lengthening into the side body. Because in twists and inversions, we'll be moving in a variety of ways. <sighs> Breathe, open, release tensions, invite healing energy in. And then the next time you're Hand comes down to the right side body and the left arm lengthens. Again, in whatever way is perfect for you, just holding this, spinning the palm down toward the earth, maybe finding your drishti gazing upward, straight ahead or down to the right. Maybe you'd like to take that top arm and wrap it gently behind your back with the palm facing out, just opening up the heart. The first kind of gentle twist here, 
maybe gazing over that left shoulder. Breathe. And then releasing this left arm back up, placing it down now to the side body. Other arm comes up, lengthen here. Find the side bend, spin the palm down, maybe gazing upward, breathe, open up that side body. And then maybe taking the arm behind you, palm facing out will open up the shoulder more, maybe gazing over that right shoulder and again inviting a gentle twist. And remembering in the twist to continue to breathe as fully as you can, as we did in the warm-up breaths. <sighs> and releasing that arm, nicely done. Coming all the way back up to Sukhasana. Maybe a couple more rolls of the shoulders here. Move the head and neck around, just relaxing into the upper body. Beautiful. And coming in pause here. You can sit on your cushion or take it to the side, just extending those legs out, leaning back, tapping them out a bit. Good. Drawing the soles of the feet together. And again, you can keep the feet further away from the body or you can pull in the heels a little bit closer to the body. Hands can be wrapped around the ankles or around the toes. And just butterfly the knees up and down. Opening up the hips a bit, the inner thighs. And then finding our stillness in cobbler's pose by placing the elbows and in the insides of the knees, perhaps pressing the elbows down as you draw those knees up. Keep that spine lengthened. And then release those legs and maybe press those elbows in. And notice, maybe those knees will drop a little bit more. Maybe, maybe not. Again, whatever happens, however the asanas manifest in your body is perfect. Whatever is best for you. Nice. And then coming all the way back up to seated, extending the legs out again in staff pose. Legs are straight and strong without locking through the knees. Toes are drawn up toward the shins, palms on either side of the hips, pressing the palms down, keeping that spine lengthened. You're gazing at the, off the tips of your toes, about a foot or so above. Nice. And then releasing, we're going to be transitioning now to hands and knees. So if you need any extra padding, please feel free to do what works for you. And from here, we're in table now. So you want to have your hands open so that the weight of your body is distributed through the big knuckles of the hands. The wrists, elbows, and shoulders are all lined up. You're gazing to the top of your mat and your knees are right underneath your hips. <sighs> Moving through cat cow now from this kneeling position, this always starts, originates at the tailbone. So on the inhale, lift the tailbone Gaze forward, let the whole spine follow. And then on the exhale, tuck the tailbone round the spine, press the floor away. Tuck in that chin and go back and forth. Again, inviting the movement of cat-cow to start at the tailbone for both the cat and the cow. And that again will just allow the spine to follow. Just like you're pulling a string of pearls and the whole spine just follows. From the base of the spine all the way to the base of the neck. 
Again, remember your breathing, inhaling and exhaling as fully as you can. Nicely done. Then coming back to table, extending your right leg back, ball the foot down onto the mat, pressing through the heel toward the earth, feeling the stretch in the back of the leg. And the other thing I forgot to mention, you can always go to forearms if your wrists and hands are sensitive. So that right leg is back, lifting it up hip height, pausing here. Now you can stay here or you can cross that right leg over to the left side, placing that ball the foot down, gazing over that left shoulder, squeezing into the left side body as you press the right hip to the right. Breathe here. Again, a gentle, gentle little twist. And if you're on forearms, you can be a little bit of an inversion as well. And then unwind here, pause, come to forearms, just move the hips around, close and open the hands perhaps. Maybe the head relaxing. Again, take your time. Notice how you feel. Oh, and then coming back up to your table. Extending the left leg back this time, ball the foot onto the earth, pressing through the heel. Again, just opening up the back of the leg, the calf, through the Achilles tendon there, and then lifting that leg up. Again, you can stay here or you can cross it over to the right side now. You can stay here or you can turn and look over that right shoulder, squeezing into the right side body this time pressing the left hip toward the left. Nice, and then unwind everything, coming into puppy. So the knees can be wide, the toes can touch, widening out the arms to the sides of your mat as you just invite your heart and your head your third eye area to drop down onto the mat, perhaps. Hips are up in the air in puppy, and that is a little less intensity on the knees. Now, if you prefer child pose, you can sink the hips back over those heels. Again, be mindful as to how this feels with your knees. It's the more you're weight bearing on the knees, if you have any knee sensitivities, that might be a lot to manage. So again, self-care. And then wherever you are in child or puppy, find what's perfect arm position. So maybe you want the hands to be underneath the third eye. Maybe you'd like the arms to the side body, or maybe you'd like to keep them where they were, standing out. And breathe. Maybe rocking the hips side to side. Again, just notice how you feel. And then coming back up to table, now we're going to be offering thread the needle now, which is a wonderful inversion twist. <clears throat> so from table, extend your right arm up, gazing up at it. And then we're going to begin to thread it through palm up, reaching to the left side of the mat. Now, as you reach to the left side of the mat, you're going to begin to bend the knees, reach through, Place the side of the head on the mat. Now, some people like a cushion or a pillow under their head. With thread the needle, you don't want a lot of weight on your head. You want thinking of the weight more into the lower body versus the head. So you should be able to easily lift your head off the mat. If that's not the case, try to sink your hips back a little bit further if you can. Now the left hand can stay in front of the face or you can release it to the back body like we did earlier, we offered this earlier, palm facing out, breathe. <sighs> Thread 
thread the needle and then begin to unwind taking that left arm placing it back onto the mat slowly unwind come back to child pose or puppy your choice Just release. Nice. And then we're going to come back up to table now. And we're going to move through thread the needle on the other side. <laughs> so from table, left arm now is going to float up. Reach it through. Begin that gentle inversion twist as you reach it through. Palm up your Dropping the body, again, the side of the head, maybe the shoulder on the mat. Maybe you'd like a cushion or blanket under your head. Again, that's a perfect way to practice this. That right hand can stay in front of the face or you can release it. Maybe the hand comes to the back body with the palm facing out. Again, same thing with the neck. You don't want a lot of weight there. So play with that if you're finding that it's too much simply keep the hand in front of the face that will help to alleviate some of that pressure or and or push those hips press those hips back a bit more if you can breathe experience this inversion twist nice and then slowly unwind Coming back to table now, child pose or puppy, or some people might want to float up to downward facing dog to release. So if you would like to take a down dog, again, having those hands nicely spread out, the fingers, big knuckles pressing into the earth, curl the toes under as you press up with those knees bent a lot in the beginning. Maybe walk the dog by pressing one heel at a time down toward the earth. Let the head relax in between the arms. And then coming to stillness, pressing the heels toward the earth. Nice. Breathe. Beautiful. And then coming back to table. Nicely done, everybody. Take your forearms maybe to the mat again release close and open those hands take care of all parts of our body and now if you have um blocks or you'd like to use them or your books i would invite you to take your blocks to the top of your mat any height that you want And we'll be coming into a low lunge, then a half split, then low lunge with a um, twist option. Okay, so from table, we're going to first invite that right leg to step up in between the blocks. Now, here, you want to be leaning in so that your knee lines up over your ankle. Yeah, you can see that. I got the block right in the way. This is always a work in progress when you're doing a video. <laughs> um, so the ankle and the knee are lined up. You don't want to be way over. You want to be able to see those toes. That's always a good cue um, to be able to see those toes. And then from here, your hands are on the blocks. Again, the blocks can be any height. You don't want to be rounded over too much. So kind of adjust your blocks to where you feel like you can lengthen the spine more leaning in so your right hip and your left hip are as even as you can kind of drawing that right hip back pressing that left hip forward breathe <sighs> and then we're going to be moving into half splits we're going to take the blocks with us if we like as we straighten this right leg sinking back so the heel is down toes are lifted Again, you can have the blocks along with you. You can keep your eyes gazing forward. Some of you might like to drop your head and round your spine here. 
Again, depends on how it feels to you. If you're working with any osteoporosis of the spine, and your doctor may have said don't do a lot of rounding, you, know, you might prefer to stay up in extension like I am. Or again, rounding is perfectly fine as well, depending on how your body receives it. Now we're gonna be walking back to that low lunge again. So we're gonna be settling in again. So you've got that ankle and knee lined up. And this time we're gonna be offering a twist here. So it's a choice. So you can stay right here if you'd like, gazing forward, or you can bring that left hand and block right into the instep of the right foot. Releasing that right arm, raising it up as we're gazing up at it perhaps. Then option again to wrap it behind your back. So we've done this a couple times now. So you might feel more range of motion, more openness in the shoulder perhaps. And again, if you wanna look up toward that right, you can, or you can look down. Again, lots of choices for you. <sighs> Breathe. And then slowly unwind, coming back to low lunge. Release back to hands and knees. Now again, your choice, child pose, puppy, or downward facing dog. So make your choice, find where you wanna be. Just relax and release everything out. Perhaps notice Right side versus left. And then we're gonna meet back in table. Get your blocks again, or your book. And this time we're gonna take that left leg forward. So step it forward, however it gets there. And again, remember you're trying to line up the ankle and the knee there, yep. Again, blocks on any height that you want, gazing forward. Find that alignment. Keep that length and spine. <sighs> I just love blocks and straps. I think they're wonderful supports. And then half split. So we're gonna begin to walk the hands and the blocks back with us toward the, uh, toward the body as we lengthen through that left leg, the heel is down, the toes are lifted. And again, some people are gonna sink down more than I am here. Again, find your expression of the posture. <sighs> some people prefer a head to knee approach. You can do that as well. Again, find what feels good to you. And then we're gonna move, it, move back to low lunge. And again, with the low lunge, think about your hips in alignment with one another. The right hip may be a little bit further back, but just think about that in the same line if possible. And again, the knee and the ankle can sink into that left knee a bit more, opening up the right hip. Now the twist option, taking that right hand and block in toward the instep of the left foot, Stay here if you'd like, or release that left arm, gaze upwards, float it up. Maybe tuck it behind your back, palm facing out, breathe. <sighs> Again, I love tw twists and inversions. It's just challenging, but I really find them helpful, releasing energy. Now we're gonna turn the head, and then unwind from the twist, beautiful. And again, your choice, child pose, puppy, or downward facing dog. <sighs> beautiful. <clears throat> and now we're gonna come Back to seated before we come onto our back to complete our practice today. So, coming back to seated, extending the legs out in front, 
again in, in um, your dandasana so your legs are straight and strong or straight and strong sorry <laughs> sometimes the words just don't flow like I'd like them to okay the, the toes pulling up toward the shins here sits bones rooted palms gently pressing into the earth good keeping the right leg where it is then left knee place that foot on the mat about hip distance apart now you can stay here we're going to be doing a seated twist now <clears throat> or you can cross the leg over the right leg as long as the sole of the foot the whole bottom of the foot is on the mat if you're on the side of your ankle that's not the best for your ankle so then I would recommend coming back here okay safety always first so as you're extended through that right leg, that left leg is gently pulling in. You're going to take that right hand or elbow, and we're going to be rotating this direction here, keeping that length in spine. That's the most important thing in this twist, okay? Taking a breath in, slowly find the rotation to the left, taking that left hand behind you like a kickstand perhaps, inviting that crown of the head to lift, Open up through that left side body. Breathe. <sighs> nice. And then slowly begin to unwind. Unwind that leg. Beautiful. Leaning back. Maybe tap it out. Let those legs get a little bit of a relax here. Now we're going to come into the twist on the other side. So this time that left leg is straight and strong. That's our anchor leg. Right leg bends. And again, same choices. Staying here about hip distance apart or crossing over as long as that foot can be on flat on the, on the mat. Okay, find that beautiful length and spine. This time we're going to be rotating to the right. So that left hand or elbow is going to wrap around as we begin the rotation and then the right hand will go behind us as a kickstand. So taking a breath on the exhale, slowly begin the twist, the whole spine moving as a unit. You can use that left hand to draw that top knee in toward the body a little bit more if you'd like, intensifying this twist if that feels good to you. Again, in a twist, we do have, I know I do too, have a tendency to really crank into it, like move into it a little more intensely than maybe the body 